I'm watching you. Lord, Lord Keynes, wow, it's, it, 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 it's, it's such an honor. Indeed, sir. Please, just go, just go right on through. Whoa, whoa. No. Identification, please. Hayek? Nope, Hayek. Like, um, high explosives. High, high explosives? Yeah. We have a 1066. HQ, I repeat, we have a 1066. Copy that, Mike. Proceed. What is a 1066? That was just an example of how to pronounce my name. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, members of the committee, we are here today to consider the impact of government spending on our economy. We're fortunate to have two world-renowned economists to offer their testimony on the matter. Oh, I see you took a detour down the road to serfdom. Talk about the end of laissez-faire. <laughs> well, shake it off, Freddy. I'm not pulling any punches in there. I'm ready. Are you? Prepare for the return of the master. <laughs> John Maynard Keynes, F.A. Hayek, round two, round 2.0. Same economists, same beliefs, new microphones, new mustaches. Here we are, peace out, great recession, thanks to me, as you see, we're not in a depression. Recovery, destiny, if you follow my lesson, Lord Keynes, here I come, line up for the procession. We brought out the shovels and we're still in a ditch and still digging. Don't you think it's time for a switch from that hair of the dog? Friend, the party is over. The long run is here, and time to get sober. Are you kidding? My cure works perfectly fine. Have a look, the Great Recession ended back in 09. I deserve credit, things would have been worse. All the estimates prove it. I'll quote chapter and verse. Econometricians, they're ever so biased. Are they doing real science or confirming their bias? Their Keynesian models are tidy and neat, but that top-down approach is a fatal conceit. Oh. Which way should we choose? More bottom my phone, more took down the fight continues. Gains in high it's second round. It's time to win it. More from the top, more from the crowd. Let's listen to the great saints. Gains in high it throwing down. We could have done better had we only spent more. Too bad that only happens when there's a world war. You can carp all you want about stats and regression. Do you deny World War II cut short the depression? Wow, one data point and you're jumping for joy. The last time I checked, wars only destroyed. There was no multiplier. Consumption just shrank as we used scarce resources for every new tank. Pretty perverse to call that prosperity. Ration meat, ration butter, a life of austerity. When that war spending ended, your friends cried disaster. Yet the economy thrived and grew faster. You too only see what you want to see The spending on war clearly goosed GDP Unemployment was over, almost down to zero That's why I'm the master, that's why I'm the hero Creating employment's a straightforward craft When the nation's at war and there's a draft If every worker was staffed in the army and fleet We'd have full employment and nothing to eat People work to live better, to put food on the shelves. Real growth means production of what people demand. That's entrepreneurship, not your central plan. My solution is simple and easy to handle. It's spending that matters. Why is that such a scandal? Money sloshes through the pipes and the sluices, revitalizing the economy's juices. It's just like an engine that's stalled and gone dark. To bring it to life, we need a quick spark. Spending's the lifeblood that gets the flow going. Where it goes doesn't matter. Just get spending flow. You see slack in some sectors as a general glut. But some sectors are healthy, only some in a rut. So spending's not free, that's the heart of the matter. Too much is waste.
wasted as cronies get fatter. The economy's not a car, there's no engine to stall. No expert can fix it, there's no it at all. The economy's us, we don't need a mechanic. Put away the wrenches, the economy's organic. Which way should we choose? Both bottom up or more top down? The fight continues. Painting high, exciting round. It's time to wait in. Or from the top or from the ground. Let's listen to the great sections and how it going So down. what would you do to help those unemployed? This is the question you seem to avoid. When we're in a mess, would you have us just wait doing nothing until markets equilibrate? I don't want to do nothing. There's plenty to do. The question I ponder is who plans for whom? Do I plan for myself? Or leave it to you. I want plans by the many, not by the few. Let's not repeat what created our troubles. I want real growth, not a series of bubbles. Stop bailing out losers. Let's prices work. If we don't try to steer them, they won't go berserk. Come on, are you kidding? Don't Wall Street gyrations challenge a worldview of self-regulation? Even you must admit that the lesson we've learned is more oversights needed or else we'll get burned. Oversight? The government's long been in bed with those Wall Street executives. And the firms that they bled. Capitalism's about profit and loss. You bail at the losers, there's no end to the cause. The lesson I've learned, it's how little we know. The world is complex, not some circular flow. The economy's not a class you can master in college. To think otherwise is the pretense of knowledge. Which way should we choose? can counter depression people aren't chess men you move on a board at your whim their dreams and desires ignored with political incentives discretion's a joke those dials are twisting just mirrors and smoke we need stable rules and real market prices so prosperity emerges and cut short the crisis give us a chance so we can discover the most valuable ways to serve one another <laughs> Listen to the great sight, changing how it's going down.